Over the years, scientists have uncovered many of the human brain's mysteries and shortcomings that were securely hidden in our psyche. Sometimes we do something weird and then think, what was the logic of my behavior? Was it there? In fact, there's always some logic, but most often it hides in certain peculiarities of your mind. You don't necessarily have to be an expert in psychology to understand what's going on in people's heads and use it to your advantage. There are some psychological tips that work on a subconscious level that help you win another person's trust, get somebody's approval, and relax when you're stressed out. Today, we're going to tell you about psychological effects that affect you almost every day. Watch the video till the end to understand why we always want something that is impossible to achieve and why we act one way or another. When a group of people are laughing, each person looks at the individual he or she likes the most. After a good joke or in the middle of an interesting discussion, every person instinctively looks at the person they like the most. This is because they want to make sure that the object of their desires approves of and shares their sense of humor. So, in order to find out everything about a group of friends, get a few really good jokes ready and watch everybody like a hawk. Your observations might turn out really surprising. The anchoring effect People feel it's much easier to evaluate something if they have the original price, even if it's wrong, as kind of an anchor. It's often used by stores. For example, you wouldn't buy a blouse for $300 in your right mind. However, if you see it originally cost $1,000, you'll think it's a sin to miss such a great deal, even though the initial price might be invented. We tend to see our memories as small movies or video clips. Things that lie on some shelf inside our brain, safe and unalterable. But as it turns out, recollections of past events change every time they pass before our mind's eye. Their content is influenced by memory blackouts and by events that took place in the more recent past. For example, you don't have clear recollections of all the people who attended a family get-together a couple of years ago. But since your aunt never misses events of this kind, your mind eventually includes her in the memories, even if she was absent on that particular occasion. Chew on something when you're nervous. Before an important conversation, a public speech, or another event that makes you nervous, you should try to chew some gum or even eat something. A 2011 study at Tokyo Medical and Dental University concluded that the chewing motion greatly reduces feelings of anxiety. The thing is that nobody eats when they're in danger. So while you're chewing, your brain thinks it's safe to relax. It sends a signal that relieves tension and helps calm you down. You're basically tricking your own brain. The same Tokyo research explains that some ancient Mayans and Greeks who used to chew on tree resin were less tense than their peers who didn't share this habit. Oh, maybe this is where the expression, she really chewed him out, came from. Wow, that would make her a stressed out cannibal. Okay, maybe not. Deflection to the result. We often judge the correctness of a decision by the final result not by the actions taken to achieve it. This effect is often used by those ads which concentrate you only on the final result, for example, on buying. So, if you're using a brand new iPhone, you cannot claim that the decision to spend all your money on it was right. Psychologists and sociologists have come up with something called the Dunbar's number, not dumb and dumber the maximum number of people with whom a person can maintain close ties. So even if you have thousands of friends on Facebook, you can only have meaningful communication with 50 to 200 of them. Staring can help you get any information you need. If you don't like the answer someone has given you, or it seems they're not telling you the whole story, just keep staring at them. In this situation, the silence will be so unbearable that they'll be ready to tell you anything just to end it. After all, the purpose of a stare is persuasion. 
try it out and see if it works. If you're successful, give us a thumbs up. Hey, my dog uses that on me all the time. The paradox of choice. The paradox of choice says that the more options there are, the less possibility we'll be happy with our final choice. Keep in mind that sometimes you buy something and then regret it because you could have bought it on sale or you could have found another model. Even if the final decision is the best, we can stay unhappy because the choice was too big. Imagine that you're at the airport and you need to pick up the luggage. In 10 minutes, you reach the claim area and immediately collect your suitcase. And now, a slightly different situation. You find a shortcut and manage to get to the baggage carousel in just 2 minutes. Then, you spend the remaining 8 minutes waiting for your suitcase to appear. In both cases, it took you no more than 10 minutes to pick up the luggage. However, in the second scenario, you probably felt more impatient and dissatisfied. This is due to the fact that our brain dislikes being idle and prefers to stay busy instead. And for every task completed, it rewards us with dopamine, the hormone of happiness. Ah, dopamine! <laughs> Imagine that your future employer is a good friend of yours. To avoid getting the jitters during an oral exam or a job interview, imagine that the person in front of you is a friend you haven't seen in ages. This will help calm you down really quickly, and answering the person's questions will be much easier. Another point to keep in mind, why not consider the possibility that the interviewer is as nervous as you are? You never know, maybe it's their first hiring interview or their first exam as a teacher. And if you come in with a smile, You'll not only feel more confident yourself, but put them at ease too. Clustering illusion This illusion is characterized by the tendency to see a certain system in random coincidences. This especially applies to gamblers and lovers of fate signs. Both of them can wrongly interpret events. Don't wind yourself up, okay? Studies show that our brain can store no more than 3 to 4 pieces of information at once. In addition, this info can only be preserved for 20 to 30 seconds. After this time, we forget it unless we keep refreshing it in our memory over and over again. For instance, let's say you're driving and talking on the phone. Don't do that. The person on the other end gives you a number, but you can't write it down, so you try to memorize it instead. You repeat the number again and again, so as to preserve it in your short-term memory until you can disconnect and write it down. By the way, the fact that we find it easier to remember 3-4 to four pieces of information at a time explains why so many things consist of 3-4 to four digits or lines. If you have to work with people a lot, put a mirror behind you. If you have to talk to a lot of people at work, hang a small mirror behind your desk. You'll be surprised that many people will be more polite and ready to meet you halfway in negotiations. This is because nobody likes to see themselves angry or annoyed. <laughs> How cool is that? And the most important thing is that these psychological tips work. By the way, we have a lot more videos that reveal the secrets of human psychology. Check out the links at the top of the screen once you've watched this video till the end. <laughs> Pratt Fall Effect Imagine a couple walking down the street, and one of them suddenly hits a pole. It's unlikely the other one will think, what an idiot! On the contrary, the first one will seem even sweeter. It's because perfection is repulsive, and mistakes are attractive. They make us more human. That's why you shouldn't get too upset having stumbled in front of anyone. Our brain constantly processes information received from sensory organs. It analyzes visual images and interprets them in a form accessible to us. For example, the reason for us being able to read a text quickly lies in the fact that we're not actually reading it. We simply notice the first and last letters of each word and intuitively fill in the rest based on our past experience. As the saying goes, 
It doesn't matter in what order the letters appear in a word if the first and last letters remain in place. Well, that was weird. See? We look at groups of jumbled letters, yet perceive them as proper words. And this doesn't just happen with texts. If you think someone is looking at you, just yawn. Oddly enough, yawning is like the common cold. There's even a phenomenon called contagious yawning. Ooh. It's typical for humans and chimpanzees to yawn when they see, hear, or just think about yawning. Some individuals are less influenced by others' yawns, but out of 328 participants of a study conducted at the Duke University School of Medicine, 222 yawned while watching a video of people yawning. Are you yawning right now just hearing about phenomena? <laughs> Ooh, that works. So, it's more likely than not you'll be able to use yawning to see who's watching you. To figure it out, just yawn and look around. In most cases, the person who is staring at you will yawn too. Not only that, but if you do this when the sun comes up, you can yawn at dawn. <laughs> Thank you very much. The Kuleshov Effect the effect when a viewer, after seeing two unrelated frames, unconsciously makes up a logical connection between them is called the Kuleshov effect. Kuleshov created a short film in which a man's facial expression was alternated with various shots. The audience thought that his facial expression was different each time, depending on whether he was looking at a plate of soup, a dead girl, or a woman on a sofa. However, his face was the same all the time. This effect is successfully used not only among cinematographers, but also among marketers, instilling in you certain associations with a certain product or character. Imagine you're at work studying an important document. Suddenly, you realize that you've just read the same sentence three times in a row. Instead of analyzing the text, your mind was wandering. Scientists from the University of California say that every day, we spend 30% of our time daydreaming. Sometimes, sometimes for, for instance, during long trips, this share increases to as much as 70%. But there's nothing wrong with it. Studies show that people who love to wander in the clouds tend to be more creative. Also, they're better at solving problems and getting rid of stress. If you want to break up a fight, get something to eat and stand between people who are fighting. This is called the snack man effect. Really? The story goes that one day, a fight broke out on a New York subway train. A woman attacked a man who she claimed had been following her. In the middle of the fight, another man got up and stepped between them. He stood there for some time just nonchalantly snacking on his Pringles. Miraculously, the fighting passengers chilled out and peace was restored. The hero of the day was dubbed the Snack Man and became internet famous. There's a simple psychological explanation for what happened that day. Eating is associated with relaxation and being calm. The probability of a person attacking someone who is eating is very low, so the conflict resolves itself in no time. Body negative. Body negative is a condition where a person thinks they're ugly, and this is why their personal life is a fail, and their whole life is a fail. Most often such people are attractive, and the problem is more about self-esteem than real flaws. Have you ever wondered why people always stop to look at the aftermath of a road accident? Even though bystanders find the sight distressing, they continue to gawk. Such curiosity is triggered by our ancient brain, a section responsible for survival. Its function is to constantly scan the environment, posing and answering three questions. Can I eat that? Can I have sex with that? Can I be killed by that? Actually, there's a fourth question. Can I buy that at a discount? Food, sex, and danger are still the things fundamental to our staying alive, so we can't help but pay attention to them. If you want to get rid of something, just hand it to someone while talking to them. Imagine you're moving boxes or picking up around the house. 
If you need a helping hand but no one is offering, just ask someone nearby a personal question or their opinion on something. When the person is answering the question, their brain is so busy formulating thoughts that all other actions switch to autopilot. In this situation, your conversation partner will take whatever you give them without even thinking. I can't wait to try that one! Survivorship Bias Most often we judge a situation only by successful people, survivors. And that's why we know just one side of it. For example, we envy a business person who got rich selling Bengal lights. But we don't know how many business people failed with them. You should always try to look at things from different angles. As part of a recent study, scientists set up two tables in a supermarket. On the first table, they place six types of jam. On the second, 24. As a result, 60% of customers stopped to try the jams at table 1. However, when it came to making purchases, table 2 proved four times more popular. Why did this happen? As we already know, our brain can only focus on three to four things at a time. Therefore, making final decisions is easier when there's a limited number of options, such as six types of jam. Nevertheless, we always crave variety. We love to browse through a wide range of products. That's why we're more likely to stop by the table with 24 types of jam. Although, in the end, we'll still go for the same brand we've bought many times before. If you want to easily become friends with someone, just ask them for a favor. It doesn't have to be a huge favor, just something simple. Passing the sauce, a napkin, a sheet of paper, or even asking for some advice. The person who's doing the favor will think they like you because they're doing something for you, however trivial it may be. Here's what one woman says. Well, I never really liked the guy until one day he asked me to lend him 20 bucks. I then thought he considered me a close enough, maybe even a friend, to help him, and voila, I started to like him. Hard to reach effect. Roughly speaking, this is the phenomenon telling that the hard to reach is always more desirable. Even if we look at it from a human level, closed, high status, No one knows what's on their mind people always seem more attractive than others. We'd like to believe that all our actions are the result of careful planning. But in reality, 60-80% to of our everyday decisions are made subconsciously. Okay, that's starting to get annoying. We don't think about doing those things, we just do them. Every second, our brain receives millions of units of data. To prevent overexhaustion, some of the work gets relegated to the subconscious. Pocketing the keys, turning off the lights, closing the front door. We perform such actions automatically without thinking. All right, take your hand off the reverb button. You got it. Now, on the downside, this often leads to self-doubt. For instance, when we arrive at the office and suddenly begin to fret over whether or not we've turned the iron off. Schedule important meetings for the beginning or the end of the day. People remember things best when they happen at the beginning and the end of the day. Everything in between is a blur. That's why we recommend setting up important meetings for these times of the day. If you have a job interview, Try to be either the first or the last candidate. Another trick to make participants attend and be punctual is to specify a weird time and duration for the meeting. It's called the Swiss trains approach. If a person sees a meeting from 9.22 to 9.46 on their schedule, they're more likely to be on time and things will stick to the agenda more precisely. The fear of beauty. Did you notice that ordinary people are less likely to sit down next to beautiful people, for example on public transport? They do it only if there are no other seats left. In fact, some people feel excessive tension next to beautiful people. Excitement, double control of one's actions, the desire to save face, and the fear of comparison. Such stress doesn't arise next to an average person. 
Pay attention to the direction of feet while talking to other people. Now, people's feet can help you understand their true feelings in a conversation. If you come to them and they turn their body to you but not their feet, it means they're not interested in talking to you. Also, if the tips of their shoes are facing a different direction, it means they want to get away as soon as possible. Or it could mean that they had their hips replaced and somehow the doctor screwed it up. Not likely, but I'm just saying. Studies show that we can only perform one cognitive activity at a time. Try talking and reading at once or writing a letter while listening to an audiobook. Most likely, nothing good will come of it. Our brain just can't focus on two tasks simultaneously. However, there is an exception. If the second activity is purely physical and automatic, the type of thing that we perform on a day-to-day basis, then it is possible to combine both tasks. For example, you can talk on the phone while walking, but even then, there's a good chance of tripping and losing track of conversation. Uh, do you still need the reverb? Mm, maybe one last thing. Okie dokie. Copying other people's body language will help you win their trust. Repeating somebody's gestures, posture, or facial expressions can help you win their trust. The person doesn't consciously realize that they see themselves in you because of the familiar gestures. And let's be frank, most people like themselves. The most important thing here is to not overdo it. For instance, if they pick their nose, don't mirror that one. Use common sense. Also, so that people see that you're paying attention, smile when you're listening to their good news, and frown at the mention of bad events in their life. Got it? Another great technique to win trust is a sincere smile. When your smile isn't forced, your mood improves, you start to exude warmth, and people feel it. Hey, are you the one that takes advantage of these subconscious tricks? Which one is your favorite? Tell us in the comment section below. Share this video with your friends to help them pass a job interview or win over their crush's heart. Hey, thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe because more incredible content is on the way.